If you're an Xbox fan, RPGs is definitely one of the genres that has been lacking throughout the years. But at the end of this generation, Microsoft is attempting to fix this issue. They've bought studios such as Obsidian to give you these type of experiences. And they've also built a new studio of Playground Games that is rumored to be making the next entry of Fable. And that's what this video is about. This video is going to be about the changes that I feel are essential to make this brand and evolve it to the next generation, to make this the next Witcher, to make this the RPG. RPG that you must own an Xbox or a, or a huge title that you would want to subscribe to Game Pass in order to play. But before we get on with the video, definitely hit that like button if you guys enjoyed the video. You can always subscribe to the channel for weekly content and you can follow me at Twitter at Lord Addict IOP. Without any further ado, let's get on with the video. What's going on you guys? Gaming Addict here coming at you with another video. So a lot of you know that Halo is one of the original games that got me into the Xbox brand, but it is not the original. The actual brand that got me into the Xbox ecosystem is Fable. I remember buying the original Xbox and taking it home to play Fable 1. I remember picking up a 360 to play Fable 2. And obviously Fable 3 to a lot of Fable fans didn't hold its own compared to the original 2. But the question is, if they brought back this brand if they brought back fable what exactly would have to be done to the franchise in order to bring it to the next level i think the first thing microsoft needs to really focus on is how this game looks and if playground is making this they did make forza horizon so if you have it looking anywhere close to what forza horizon looks like i think you can have a winner here microsoft needs a graphical showcase I also think that Microsoft needs to abandon that cartoony look that Fable originally had. Is that something fun? Is it good? Yes. But I do feel like to be a mainstream game, you have to have that Witcher-like feeling. It's got to have a dark atmosphere and a realistic look. Got to be photorealistic. I don't want no cartoons in this game. I don't want nothing like that. Make this look real. One of the features that needs to come back from the Fable franchise is they need to go ahead and bring the appearance back depending on what choices you make in the game. If you decide to kill a bunch of people and you turn bad you need to grow horns you need to have like a dark atmosphere look if you do the opposite you save a bunch of people you need to grow wings you need to look like an angel just like you would in the original fable 1 2 and 3 also something they need to bring back from fable 3 is your equipment would change depending on you what choices you made in the game so if you were good it would look have a good characteristics and if you were bad your equipment would have bad characteristics let's bring that back as well because that was cool from fable 3 now when it comes to the story we don't really know exactly what playground's gonna do here they can completely reboot the whole franchise or they can make a sequel me particularly i would be fine with either one let's talk about the story for a little bit i know people are going to disagree if you're a huge fable fan but i personally want a dark atmosphere serious tone story i know a lot of people like the british humor in the fable games i know people like the emotes i understand this but to me in order for this franchise this brand to continue to move on to improve to be a bigger title than it ever was we got to get that stuff out of here to me what has made fable and what has always made fable is the character developments and the war World building that is in this game the fact that you can make choices to change your appearance the fact that you can make choices to change the world that is fable the british humor can go speaking of decisions let's talk about the world decisions fable 4 needs a huge amount of world decisions when you make a huge decision it needs to drastically change what the world feels like it needs to have kind of like the megaton from fallout 3 it needs choices like that something that's essential and it will change your entire playthrough if you decide to go that direction one of the biggest things that Fable needs is detailed side quests. We need side quests that are meaningful. We don't need side quests that are going to give us pointless stuff that we'll never use. If Playground came up to me and they said, Addict, do you want 20 side quests that are kind of average or do you want 10 detailed side quests that you're going to remember for a long time? Every single time I'm going to pick the 10 because at least when I do the 10, I get stuff that I felt like I was rewarded for the side quest and I have a rememberable experience playing the side quests. Now, in terms of length on the main missions itself, make it kind of like a Skyrim thing to where you don't necessarily have to focus on the main mission. You can if you want, but give 
the players enough options to feel like they have more things that they can do besides just do the main story. Now let's talk about villain. The original Fable had Jack of Blades. I would say Jack of Blades, to me, in my opinion, is one of the best villains that's ever been put in gaming. I would not even be against that they reuse this dude if they remake it. But if they don't and they go with a sequel, let's have a memorable villain. I cannot stress this enough, you guys. If you do not have a good villain, no one's going to remember this game. Sure, they might remember certain sections of the game, but a villain always puts the games together. Let's take Far Cry, for instance. All the Far Cries had memorable villains. Sure, you might like some Far Cry games over others, but you know what a Far Cry fan can actually tell you? Who exactly those villains were because they were so memorable. Playground needs to focus on character development. And not only do they need to focus on character development, they need to focus on specific rewards depending on what choices you make. I want legendary weapons if I choose to be completely good or legendary weapons if I choose to be completely bad. And you know what? I honestly feel like they need to make it to where you can only get one of those. If you become a menace to society, you should not be able to start doing good deeds and get the, the legendary good weapon by just doing good deeds. Let us pick a path and make us choose it. Now this next one, I'm gonna kind of copy off another game. Let's take the factions from Fallout. I know Fallout New Vegas, a lot of people like that one or three, but that's not really the debate here. The faction system from Fallout New Vegas desperately needs to be in the new Fable game. Have legendary weapons that you can only get if you join a certain faction. Have certain factions that you can only join if you're a good person or a bad person. Have some that are neutral, but have some that you can only acquire if you're completely good or completely bad. And I think you have a winner when it comes to the faction system. For those of you that played Fable 1, you know the name Whisper. Whisper is your rival that follows you through the game and they do a lot of things opposite of what you do. Kind of think of Pokemon, how Gary always did everything opposite from you. He was always your rival that you came across every now and then you had a fight with opposite starter and etc. Another thing that would be really cool about this game is that they put Easter eggs from the original three. Maybe have a hero that resembles other people from you know the trilogy, the first trilogy. Might not necessarily have their name but you know you could always have someone like thunder from fable one has the same powers maybe not the same name but you know that who it is and for anyone that played the original fables you'll really appreciate that attention to detail this is the last thing i really have to say about in terms of story we need to have multiple endings we need to have an ending for a good one an ending for a bad one and you i think you'll be cool if you had an ending to where like maybe your rival was the final boss i don't know i'm not a writer i don't have anything to do with that department but i do think it would be very very vital to make sure you have multiple endings, one for you if you're completely good, one for if you're completely bad, and maybe one if you're just neutral, a little bit up or a little bit down. I think that would be cool. Now, in terms of gameplay, exactly how this game would play, there is a few scenarios and a few suggestions that I do have. First thing is the foundation the gameplay should be built on. I personally think that kind of the Dark Souls formula, now not exactly Dark Souls is like, obviously change some stuff up to make sense to Fable, but I want that more of, of a challenging kill or be killed type of gameplay. Now, you don't have to have it as hardcore as any of the Dark Souls or Sekiro, but I do feel like that type of direction and making it more unique to the Fable universe will do a lot of good for this brand. Fable has always had different type of playing styles, and I think that Fable 4 needs to really capitalize on that. Fable needs a lot of different gameplay styles. You know, you can have the archery, you can have the sword, you can have the shield, or you can just straight up cast magic all day. You need to take that formula, that foundation, that's been built in the first three and expand on it. And you can always bring stuff that was in the original Fable back that really capitalized on different play styles. For instance, Magic had a lot of spells that you can capitalize on being an archer. Magic had a lot of spells that you can capitalize on being a warrior. You had healing spells. You could do that where you can pretty much be a mage warrior. Fable needs that kind of diversity to make it truly stand out from the other RPGs. And obviously this wouldn't be an RPG without RPG mechanics like an RPG tree, you know, just like Fable 1 had, I want that tree to be true. I want there to be a warrior tree. I want there to be a stealth tree. I want there to be a mage tree. And I want the mage tree to highlight the other trees. I want them to make all three of these branches extremely detailed and diverse, but actually have perks and skills that are meaningful. I don't want any perks that I can't use because they're, they're just not good. Make some perks that you can only get if you're evil. Make some perks you can only get if you're good. Make some of that are neutral. And, you know, you can even have perks 
perks that are exclusive to certain factions that you are required to be good or bad. I think it would be extremely beneficial to Fable, and it would be one of those key points that would bring it to the next level for the Xbox brand. For those of you that's been following me for a while, you know I extremely enjoy boss fights. I love a good boss. Make them have extra bosses in here. I love when games do that. Give us an award for beating these bosses that's just not an achievement. I want in-game content that makes sense to why I killed that boss. There's a lot of different things that Playgrounds can do to the Fable brand. And these are just some of the stuff that I thought about on the on the go. So clearly, since they're having years to do it, I expect something similar or something better. I don't want an average Fable. I want a fantastic Fable. But anyway, you guys, tell me what you guys think. What kind of Fable do you want in the comment section below? I'm kind of curious what your guys' question is. And until next time, this is Gaming Addict. I'm out of here. Peace.